Brother King, I'm going, first of all, thank you so much. I think I, I love your inspiring words. And uh, we have our own Sabbath school, Lower It, Poet Lower It, with us. And uh, we appreciate all you say and all you do. And uh, because I did not um, push the button uh, for the, the recording, I want you to hang around because I want you to do it one more time so that when we uh, put this on uh, YouTube, uh, we want to make sure that that is a part of what we, what we do on YouTube. We wanna make sure that you're on there and uh, we appreciate all you, you have done, sir. And Mama King, I see you in the background. I know you're a big inspiration for that young man. <laughs> so we love you both. And uh, we're, we're going to uh, get started with our Sabbath school teaching. Um, just to our, tonight, our, our uh, guest teacher is Elder Dwayne Hall. And uh, he, you know, I asked him for a short bio, so it shouldn't take me more than about 20 minutes to say this. So, <laughs> so we want you to, uh, so we just want you to just uh, sit back and relax. And uh, we're going to give you a little bit about uh, Elder, Elder Hall. I've known him for quite a, for quite a long time. Um, and um, he's, he's been a good friend of mine for a long time. Elder Dwayne Hall is a member of the Grace Community Church, uh, formerly the Glenville Church, and they are in Euclid, Ohio. He is currently serving as Grace's Discipleship Ministry Director, which oversees Sabbath School and other small groups. The mission of the discipleship team is helping move members to fully committed followers of Jesus through the ministry of small groups. During this global pandemic of the team has led multiple small groups throughout the city, helping members stay connected. And that's very important, very important. Sabbath school also plays a vital role in this ministry. Elder, Elder Hall's passion is seeing people grow spiritually in these small group settings. Dwayne has served on the elders board since 1999. He has served as worship ministries director and stewardship leader. He has served as a member of the praise team and health ministries team. He is currently serving a second term on the uh, AWC executive, or the, I should say the uh, Allegheny West Conference executive committee. He enjoys traveling, reading, biking, and considers himself a sweet potato pie connoisseur. Oh, you must haven't talked to my wife yet, have you? Oh, uh, <laughs> come on now. Dwayne considers it a privilege to spend time tonight with the Southeast family. We are glad to have a good friend of mine as well as a, a elder and one who has baptized many. Uh, we were glad to have him here to teach us tonight. And Elder Hall, I'm going to turn the meeting over to you. Thank God for you. Glad to have you. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, Southeast. I miss you all. I miss being able to get into my car and just come over to Southeast to hear some good singing and good preaching and just to see your faces. But I, I thank the Lord for technology that allows us to gather on tonight um, to fellowship. And so let's let me give you yeah. all a big hug. A big hug is good to see you all. Um, Brother King, I wanna thank you for that poem. It was an awesome poem, I enjoyed it. And listen, soon and very soon, I believe it, soon and very soon, we're gonna be able to meet up again. Um, we're, we're gonna be able to, to gather, to worship, to sing the praises of God. And, and until then, I hope you all are well. I hope you are doing fine, and we're going to get through this pandemic together. Amen? Well, it is good to be with you. I just want to, we are on lesson seven tonight. Lesson seven, and I see some wonderful names. And if you can, if you can, I, I feel like I'm, I'm part of the family. I mean, I mean, we, we, we are <laughs> one elegant yeah. lesson. Yes, hey, come on, come on. I want to see your faces. I want to, I want to see you. If, if you, if you can, Come on off and let's show me those faces. 
it's good. I see some familiar names. How y'all doing? And we are just, I'm hoping, oh, there's your sister Brooks. Now listen, listen, he, listen. He just said, you make, I, I know you make pound cakes, but now if you make sweet potato pies too, we got to talk. We got to talk. We got, okay. All right. We got to talk. We got to talk. <laughs> but listen, I'm glad to be with you. And like um, Elder Brooks said, you know, we have been serving as discipleship leader and we have, we have had to shift in this season. You know, I mean, the pandemic has hit hard. And so we have had small groups. We used to meet in homes. Okay. We used to meet in homes. But of course, once we couldn't do that, we ended up meeting on Zoom and conference calls. And I'm, I'm telling you, people would, would, would try, uh, gather in and, and, and meet and study the word of God. And now we, we also have um, uh, some Sabbath school classes meeting on Zoom, um, one tonight. And we also have one Sabbath morning. Um, and, so, and so we have been pressing forward, just believing that soon and very soon, um, this thing is going to pass. And we are going to see brighter, better days. Yes. But tonight, we are on lesson seven. And if you have your lessons, I want you to open um, your lessons to page 52. Um, and we are going to talk about the defeat of the Assyrians. The uh, defeat yes. of the Assyrians. And I'm telling you, this is, I thought it was just a great lesson. I thought it was a fantastic lesson. If you don't have a lesson, I'm sure you have a lesson. But if you don't, you really need your Bible tonight because we are going to stay focused on the text from on the, on the text from the scripture. And I'm going to need your input. And so and so let's let's have a word of prayer. I know you've already prayed, but I want to pray once again as we get started with the defeat of the Assyrians. Gracious Father, we just come praising you, lifting you up and thanking you for yet another Sabbath day. You've kept us another week. And God, as we gather tonight, we ask that you just bless us with your presence, bless us with your spirit, lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, I, um, I, I want to tell you something else about me. When I was in high school, I was a thespian. I, I used to do plays and, and musicals, and um, I actually had to lead in my senior high musical. And for a while, I really wanted to be an actor. And, and I even thought about going to um, acting school and I want to be an actor. And I tell you this for this. T tonight's lesson <laughs> reminds me of a blockbuster movie. <laughs> I mean, there are scenes in this, in this, in this lesson. There are the script, there are one-liners, and there are just amazing moments of drama. And tonight, what I want to do, this thought came to me um, a little earlier. What I want to do is as we go through tonight and as we discuss, I want us to, to put ourselves in the text. We're going to be the soldiers. We're going to be the, um, 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 the community, the nation, the people of God. And as we discuss, I want you to tell me how you feel and what we should do. And then, and then, and then we're going to relay it to today's situation that we're in. Okay. Because there's a lot of deep um, instruction for us in these texts. But, but, but I, I, I'm sure you study. But if you didn't, we're going to take some time and we're going to read the word of God. I have a few different versions and, and, and we need to get to the text so we'll understand exactly what's going on in this drama. Okay. And so if you will, let's go to our memory text. Our memory text is, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel. This is found in Isaiah 37, 16. It says, the one who dwells between the cherubim. You are God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Now, I want you to tell me, I want you to come off a of mute, and I want you to tell me when you hear this memory verse, what, what, how do you feel? What, what, what type of emotions does this verse evoke within you? Tell me how you feel about this verse. What is it doing for you right now? What do you think they're talking about? 
Well, I, I think it's talking about that he is the only God. It shows he's between the cherubims. There's nothing in between that. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the cherubims is covering one entity, and that's God himself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it just shows where he is powerful and he is sovereign. So that, that's what I see in that. I like that. I like, but brother, one text says you are the God. And I, and, and I just, it was dramatic for me. It's like, you are the God. Now, someone else, what, what, what are you getting from this text? I'm getting so inspired by this text to let us know that God is the only God, the true God, and everything else is a copycat. Mm -hmm. And that he is between the angels, the cherubims who worship and praise him and giving us invitation to know that this too will be our dwelling place and we will have the opportunity to sit amongst God and the cherubims once we have the opportunity to receive the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And like you said, that he alone is the God. Mm -hmm. And I again emphasize the copycat of the invitation in, in uh, the, the un unauthoritative official and one and only God. It makes me feel like, wow, what are we sad about? What are we complaining about? Yeah. That we are divinely protected. Yes. Yes. Anyone else? What are you getting out of this text? How you doing, Brother Dwayne? Hey man, how you, how you doing? Sir? Yes, sir. Good, good. Uh when I when I look at this, when I see you alone of mm -hmm. all the kingdoms of the earth, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. have made the heavens and earth. That mm -hmm. means the kingdoms, there's no one above him, no mm -hmm. one. He mm -hmm. controls all the kingdoms of the earth and heaven. I like That's that. What I see. All of the kingdoms of the earth. I like that. Anyone else? Amen. 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 Well then, let's 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 start with our drama. Let's open it up and see what's going on. If you will, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Isaiah 36:1. Isaiah 36, 1. And this is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to divide our, lessons, our lesson into three sections. The first section is, in whom shall we trust? In whom shall we trust? The second section is, why should God be trusted? And the third section is God and personal calamities. And so I may not go day by day. But what we're going to do is divide our, 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 our lesson into sections, okay? And the first section we're going to deal with is trust, okay? So let me, let me give you a little background of our text for Isaiah 36.1. If you have been following along with Isaiah, and I know you have, you remember Ahaz. Ahaz is dead, okay? And under his leadership, Judah had to pay protection money in the form of a tribute to Assyria. But he's dead now, okay? Now, his son, Hezekiah, is now the king. And Hezekiah rebels against the Assyrian king. Now, I want you to keep that in your mind for our drama tonight, okay? All right, so now let's go to Isaiah 36.1. And is there, can someone read it for me? Do we have a designated reader at all? Then it came to pass, Isaiah 36, chapter verse one, King James Version. Mm -hmm. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Shishan Zanabel, king of Assyria, came up against all the defense cities of Judah and took them. Folks, we're in the drama. Remember, we are Judah. We are Judah. Mm -hmm. In the 14th year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against us to take Judah and take us. How do you feel? Tell me, how do you feel? What is that verse? What kind of emotions is that verse causing you to have tonight? What's going on in your mind? What's going on in this situation? Oh, that we're in for a big fight. All right. And possibly right. be overtaken. Okay. Okay. Somebody else. 
they they've taken uh, Judah. We are in captive. We are already captive if they've taken it. Okay. So we feel threatened. We feel uh, probably a little bit upset because we know that we should be the chosen people. No mm. one should take us. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that. Someone else. Um, we have to consider what they, uh, the Assyrians did to Israel, kingdom of Israel. And, and the, um, the king of Judah, they've seen this. Okay. And so they're, 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 they're kind of nervous, to put it mildly, because they've already seen what has gone on with their, with their brothers. Okay. And, and how the Assyrians not only captured them, but moved them out of Samaria to someplace else and brought some other folk in. Okay. Okay, okay, I like that. Someone else. How are you feeling? I mean, the king of Assyria is coming. Um, 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 in the 14th year, he, he came up against all the, we're fortified, we got, we got things around us, but yet he's coming to take us. And like my brother said, and some, some have already been taken. Anyone else? Uh, let me say this uh, to everyone. This is Sabbath school. It is interactive. We I encourage you to uh, please interact uh, with uh, Elder Hall. I know a lot of you Bible uh, folks are out there. You listening? Come on, jump in there. You know, get in where you fit in, as they say. We want to hear your reactions. Thank you. And Barry, if you can just remind everybody how to unmute their phones in case some of the people on the phone forgot. How to unmute themselves? Uh, for for phones, it's star six to mute and unmute. And then uh, for others, all you have to do is hit your mute button on your computers and your uh, and your uh, phone. So it's real easy, guys. Come on, we want to hear from you. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, Brittany put in the chat here that she would feel angry. Okay, I like that. Yeah, she said she'd feel angry. I'm going to piggyback on that. Um, I think I would feel like I need I need my hero to come on and step in. Okay. Because I'm on edge right now. I'm on okay. edge. I've seen some of my other people being taken. And I don't want to be taken by somebody who would anger me. I'm God's, um, I'm part of God's army. So I'm, I'm waiting. I'm in the anticipation that we need a hero to go ahead and step in and help I us. I like that. Help us not be taken. I like that. Now, now we can all agree that this is a big situation. It's yeah. it's just it's just a it's a big situation that has come up against them. And in our lives, big situations come up. Now, now watch this. We're in a big situation now. This who has ever been in a pandemic before? <laughs> that the whole world has been affected. People have lost jobs. People have lost loved ones. People have lost money and 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 and, and homes and and we're in situations that that's scary, that's terrifying. Cancer diagnosis is a big situation. Divorce is a situation, and so the people of God find themselves in a situation. Okay, now go with me now. Let's turn to Second Chronicles thirty-two. Let's go there. Second Chronicles 32. And we're going to see how they reacted. And remember, we're with them. We're with them. And I want, I want you to, to tell me how you're feeling when we see Hezekiah is our man. Like my sister said, he's our hero right now. Okay? He's our leader. And we're going to go Hezekiah, I'm sorry, Second Chronicles 32. One to eight, and I will read. After these things and these acts of faithfulness, Sennacherib, that's the man, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah, that's us, and encamped against the fortified city, thinking to win them for himself. 
And when Hezekiah, that's our king, saw that Sennacherib had come and intended to fight against Jerusalem, he planned with his officers and his mighty men to stop the waters of the springs that were outside the city, and they helped him. A great many people were gathered, that's us, and they stopped all the springs and the brooks that flowed through the land, saying, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? He set to work resolutely and built up all the walls that were broken down and raised towers upon it. And outside it, he built another wall and he strengthened the Milo in the city of David. He also made weapons and shields in abundance. And he set combat commanders over the people and gathered them together to him in the square of the gate of the city. And, and he began to speak to them. What are you seeing in these texts? What kind of leadership are you seeing? What's going on? I like to say um, that um, first verse, it says, when Hezekiah, when he was uh, confronted, with, it was a frightening prospect for him, first mm -hmm. of all, mm -hmm. of the Assyrian invasion. But he did make two important decisions. Come on. And he did everything he could to deal with the situation. But he trusted God for the outcome. And so... That's exactly what we must do when faced with difficult or frightening situations. We need to take all the steps we can possibly to solve the problem or improve the situation like you did with drying up the waters and everything. Mm -hmm. But also we must commit those things to God in prayer and we must completely trust in him for the ultimate solution. Sister Strickland, I like, and how you doing Sister Strickland? I'm doing it's great, good, thank you. It's good to hear your voice. And, and I love what you said. He did all that he could. Now, now, perhaps someone would say, why didn't he just trust in the Lord, Sister Strickland? Well, you know, God always likes to work with us, okay? So mm -hmm. the, the divine and human, they com, 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 combine, all right? Because mm -hmm. God always wants us, when we come with the Lord, you know, we, are, we, we have our own, we have things that God has given us, okay? First of all, he's given us trust, right? And he's given us faith, but... What is, what is that faith if we don't put works with it? Mm -hmm. So we know that Hezekiah had faith in God. He was going to sit there just twiddling his thumbs and just say, okay, the Lord's got to do it. You got to put some action in yourself to show that you do have faith in the Lord. So he did what he could possibly do on the human side, mm -hmm. but on the divine side where power and victory came, he knew to call upon his God. And mm -hmm. that's what he did. I like that. I like that. He did what he could. And it's the same way. I mean, some people say, have faith in God. You don't have to wear a mask. I believe, listen, you can have faith in God, but please wear a mask in the midst of this pandemic. In the midst of a situation, you can, you need to do what you need to do. to make. If you want the job, what you got to do? Mm. You can pray all you want. But you better get up and put that application in, amen? Yeah, and and we, we see Hezekiah moving. We see Hezekiah, he gave military leadership. He gave organizational leadership. And finally, in the last text, I love this. Then he turns to the people, that's us, and he says, be strong and courageous. Mm. Do yeah. not be afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria and all the horde that is with him, for there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us mm -hmm. and to fight our battles. And the people took confidence from the words of Hezekiah the king. What are you feeling as Hezekiah says that to us today? You know, you know, I was getting a little excited just now because, you know, he came out here and poured so much confidence into the people. But if you go all the way back to verse six or ver verse five, it says he strengthened himself. He had to pull himself together first. Come on, sister. Uh, because right in the verse before, you know, it talks about he started thinking, why, why should we let these Assyrians just come in here like this? Mm -hmm. And so he had to basically find some kind of resolve, pull himself together, and then start to strategize with the help of the Lord, of course. But I love what he did because his leadership was really admirable because mm -hmm. he strengthened himself, which means that he came to some kind of resolve. 
And then he counseled. It said he, he didn't just think, I'm just going to do what I want. He, he counseled with some of his captains of war and he, he started to delegate and and, and all of that. So when I see that part about being strong and courageous, I'm going to be strong and courageous because you pulled yourself together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's encouraging to me. And you know, I didn't see that text. That's powerful right there. That before he talked to the people, he talked to himself. I like that. Thank you for pointing that out, my sister. There are three things in the verse. He says to them, he says, be strong. He says, be courageous. And he says to have faith. And, and, and I thought about us in 2021. Oftentimes, as a people, are we strong? Are we courageous? Do we have faith? And so I, I want someone to tell me, if, if I'm struggling in my walk and I need to be strong, what would you say to me? What would you say? To, what would what text would you share with me? Um, how what words of encouragement would you give to me? I see a hand up. Donna, is your hand up? Yes, it is. Okay. Go ahead, my sister. Well, actually, I would lead you to James two twenty where it talks about faith without works is dead. Okay, okay. So first of all, you got to have faith in your God because okay. he said he would never leave nor forsake you. And then you got to step out on that faith. Okay. And take some action. And that's okay. what I would tell you. Okay, okay. Somebody else, what would you tell me if, if I'm struggling with being strong, if I'm struggling, let's start here. What is faith? If I say to you, you tell me to be strong and have faith, and I say, well, what is faith? What would you say to me? So when I think about faith, I would say that faith is believing in God's word, believing that the word of God will accomplish what he says that it would. So in Genesis 1-1, you know, Genesis chapter 1, God said, let there be light, mm -hmm. and his word brought forth what he commanded. Mm -hmm. So if we have that relationship with Christ and we have faith in his word and believe in it, like my sister said, that great foot, we know that God said, just like God told them, you know, he's not gonna, he's not gonna take Jerusalem. You, know, you understand? And okay. so if God said it, <laughs> that's what he means. But a lot of times we're fearful because we don't have that connecting faith that would cause us to believe in this world. It seems like we have to do what we have to do. And then when we look at the situation, we're fearful because we're not looking at what God can do, but what can I do in a situation? So we have a lot of fear and fear takes over faith in a person. And therefore we don't believe in God's word that what he says he will do. But that's what faith is. Believing God's word will accomplish what he says it would do. Sister Strickland, you're not gonna, when you say we look at the situation, Mm -hmm. instead of looking at God. Yes. We have to look at our king high and lifted up right. and keep our eyes on him. Anyone else? What is faith? Um, and you can't see me because I'm on the phone. That's all right. Um, in Joshua 1.9, what uh, God was telling Joshua, is, have, have not I commanded you? Mm. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And this is something you can tell somebody today when they're going through things. God has promised to be with us wherever we go. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to remember this, that, that he has promised like somebody said a little while ago, I will never leave you nor yeah. forsake you. Mm -hmm. And he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. My sister, you knocked it out of the park. He said, God said, I have commanded you to be strong and, 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 and courageous. Uh, Brother, uh, go ahead, Mr. Go ahead. Oh, Elder Horn, how you doing? This is Sister Mills. Sister Mills. How you doing? Oh, I'm praising the Lord. I give you Proverbs 3, 5, okay. 6, and 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Okay. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. 
-hmm. And that is my life verse right there. Because when we trusted in the Lord, it takes everything. It takes the burden off of myself mm -hmm. when I'm trying to do everything on my own. Mm -hmm. And it brings me back to reminding me of my covenant that I have with God. When we are uh, looking to him to do everything, we trust in him. Mm -hmm. I'm not leaning to my own understanding because yeah. you could be talking to yourself in your own head and thinking that it's the Lord. Yes, yes. And doing your own thing. And then when it's all over the place, we want God to come back and fix it and clean it up. Thank so you. my advice, trust in the Lord with all, our, all of our hearts and he will direct our path. That's a promise Amen. in that verse. Amen. Amen. I like that. Uh, um, faith, according to Hebrews 11, 1, now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And yes, I mean. In 2021, we have to remember, if we don't see it, but if God said it, we can trust in it. And, and I encourage the people of God, we got we gotta, to we gotta say to ourselves, do I believe God? And so when we find ourselves in a situation like Hezekiah and these, these people, we got to turn around and encourage ourselves, like my sister said earlier. Anyone else before we move on? Yes, um, brother, brother Hall, this is Go Sister ahead. Veronica. Hey, Sister Veronica. How are you? Good, good, good. Yeah. Happy to Here's see you. So I will go to um, the Psalms because the Psalms are very encouraging. Like David had to encourage himself in the Lord. And I will go to Psalm 121. Mm -hmm. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help mm -hmm. and my help. It comes from God. Yeah. So we have to remember that God neither slumber nor sleep and he's yeah. with us and he will take us. He's on this journey with us and he will encourage us. So we have to pull from him. We yeah. can't in ourselves do it. So I will go to Psalm and I will go to Psalm 121. Yes, 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 yes. I see Sister Hood's hand is up. Go ahead, my sister. Yes, I think about when I think about faith, I think about, um, you know, we we've heard that there is another round of stimulus checks that may be on the way right mm -hmm. now, when the first check came and the second check came, there was a level of anticipation and expectation that that an individual may have had because of the word that was given that mm -hmm. on that you are entitled to $1,200 if you're single for $1,200 for every kid or however it was divided up. And now they say six. So there's a level of expectation that I had. Can I tell the truth that I had? Mm -hmm. I was looking forward to my stimulus check, you know? And so I faith works like that. So knowing that something that you believe is on the way that is going to happen. You know, I don't walk around somber. I don't walk around with my, I walk with confidence, mm -hmm, believing mm -hmm. that, you know what, whatever the bill is in due time, it's going to get paid because on, there's a come on, on the way. And come I on. believe that's what that's faith what is. Faith is believing, not walking around in a sad state or, 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 you know, that I, I can't do what is in front of me today, mm -hmm. but I'm believing the word of God. And he says that he's not like man. He can't lie because if he lied, he would no longer be God. So yeah. my day is, uh, is a day of thanksgiving. That's how my day should be because not only am I expecting God to do it, but there is a level of anticipation yeah. that goes along with the expectation. So now, you know, no wonder somebody can say, how could you be okay in a situation like this? I'm believing in the word. Like it was said, you know, the sisters and said, you know, in, uh, before in reference to the word, believing the word. Well, when I believe the word, my attitude should be a reflection uh -huh. of what I say. I believe God word says. And so I believe those two elements are important. The expectation and the anticipation Amen. is an is a, um, illustration of my faith. Thank you. If I may piggyback off of Sisterhood, the scripture that comes to my mind, I believe it's Hebrews 11 and 6. Okay. It says that those who come to God must first believe that God is. Ah! 
and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently <laughs> seek him. You first of all have to believe that God is God. Yeah. Yes. And, and there, there is no other. Yes. And yes. There is no other. And you and must expect no God to do what he says he would do. Yes. He's a reward of them that diligently seek him. We cannot just say that we trust God and believe God. We can't just think that God knows my heart. Yes. We have to show by our actions that God, that we believe that God is who he says he will. If he says he will heal cancer, when someone has cancer, we have to believe that God will heal cancer. Yes. If we believe that God's going to take us through anything, we first of all had to believe that God will do it according to his word. Amen. Because God is not a man that he can lie. Amen. We have Amen. to believe everything that God says. Listen, folks, I have been blessed by the scriptures that you share tonight. But I want to make a shift now. We've you you have helped us set a foundation. We've shared text of scripture. But like most of us who have been in a situation know, um, sometimes the situation don't go away right away. And, and, and our, our faith is going to be tested. And so now let's move on from the drama because now we, we know that they're coming. We know Hezekiah has set up um, with some military action and some organizational action. He's told the people, be faithful. Now let's see what happens in our next scene here. Let's go to um, Isaiah 36. Folks, I, th th there's a lot of scriptures here, and I'm going to try to act them out. Because I, I, I don't want to read, I don't want to bore y'all. But, but now I'm talking to y'all. Remember, we the people, we the soldiers, okay? We the soldiers. And, and, and Isaiah, I mean, I'm sorry, Hezekiah has just told us to be faithful, be strong and courageous. And we have just laid scriptures about faith. Now, let's see what happens. Let's go to Isaiah 36, 2. Isaiah 36, 2. And we're going to read a little bit, okay? I'm going to read a little bit. Uh, um, um, then he sent a large, I, I'm going to start at verse 1. In the 14th year of King Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, took his army and invaded the land of Judah. He came against all the fortified cities and captured it. He's coming against us, okay? Then he sent, watch this, a large military force. I'm in verse two. From Lachish to, he to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem to demand a full surrender. Um, the commander in charge, I'm reading from the clear word, everybody. The commander in charge stopped at the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road that leads to Washerman's Field. Now watch this. Pay attention. Three Ju Judean officials came out to meet him. They were Elakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the royal secretary, Joaz, the royal recorder in charge of the archives. Now the commander said to the officials, now watch this. He said, the king of Assyria wants to know what makes Hezekiah so confident that he can stand up against the Assyrian army? He's talking about our man. He says, do you think your words of confidence can take the place of strategy and military strength? Or on whom do you depend? The King James Version says, I believe it says, on whom do you trust? Mm -hmm. This man is coming against the people of God and he's saying, who do you trust? He has an attitude. Who do, who do, who do you trust? All right? All right? On, and, and what makes you think you can rebel, rebel against Assyria? Are you leaning on the flattery of so-called friends and expecting Egypt to come to help you? Egypt is like a splintered walking stick. If you lean on it too hard, it will break and pierce your hand. Listen to this speech. Or will you tell me you're depending on the Lord, your God? Are you with me? I'm at verse 7. He said, mm -hmm. oh, oh, will you tell me you're depending on the Lord, your God? Didn't Hezekiah order all the altars throughout the land destroyed? Didn't he tell the people to stop sacrificing to the Lord at all these places and sacrifice only in Jerusalem? How then can you go to the Lord and ask him for help? Come, 
I'll make you an offer to see where your confidence is. I'll give you 2,000 horses if you can find that many men willing to ride against it. He's basically saying, y'all ain't got no people. Mm -hmm. If you can't get that much support from your people, how do you expect to, to repulse the Assyrian attack? It shows how weak you are. I'm going to skip down. Verse 10. I haven't come to attack you just for the fun of it. This is what he says. He says, your God told me to come after you. Let's skip down. Let's we'll skip down. Let's we'll skip down. Let's go to um, 14. 14. He says, don't let King Hezekiah deceive you. He can't save you. Now, folks, talk to me. When that king, that official comes, how do you feel? What's going on in your heart? Talk to me. You have to, you way. have to, re go, ahead. Go, go ahead. I was going to say, personally, I look at King Sennacherib mm -hmm. as defying God, just like Pharaoh did when okay. he told him, like, who is this God I shall let, let Israel, uh, Israel go? They're mine, you understand? Mm -hmm. So this king did not know Hezekiah's God. But thank God Hezekiah knew his God and trusted in him because God still reigns, God still rules, you know. God sets him up and he brings him down. And this haughty king had the nerve, and he was actually talking blasphemous words, you understand, yes. people, telling them not to trust in Hezekiah and not to trust in their Lord. You understand, he's trying to bribe them. Well, just go ahead and surrender because you know what I did to Lachish and all these other nations Come on. against me. And just like proud Nebuchadnezzar, this is great battle that I have, but God brought him down. So God brings down the haughty. They just didn't know it. And in ignorance, God wings that. But hey, let me tell you for sure, judgment day is coming. And it yes. did come up to that. His own kids killed him. Yes, this is true. Yes. Someone else. Someone else. You, you have to remember that this was a man who had conquered other civilizations who were worshiping wooden gods, stone mm -hmm. gods. Mm -hmm. So that's all he'd been up against. He'd never been up against the God of the universe. Mm -hmm. And so his idea was, okay, this is the same, same kind of God like these other ones that I've been around. So, you know, we'll, we'll handle it. We can take care of that. Uh -huh. And he doesn't understand what he's coming up against. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The, the King James Version calls him the Rapshaka. The, the Rapshaka. Rab I think I'm saying it right. I, I, I wouldn't learn Rab that. Rapshaka. Right, Rab Rapshaka. Say it again for me, sister. Rapshaka. Rapshaka. I see, he's the uh -huh. Rapshaka. And I imagine when mm -hmm. he walked out, he walked out like he was the man, okay? Right. So when he looked at them and said, who do you trust? I agree with both my sisters. What an arrogant man. What an mm. arrogant man. And so, I hope that's not the bill collector calling me. It's the Sabbath. I'm not dealing with you. Okay, all right. You have to remember that he had victory. Oh, come all on, brother. The other, all the other countries or civilizations he had come up against, come he had defeated. He had their defeated gods, them. Their gods had been put up as being able to protect. Remember, he said, Hezekiah made you take down your, your, your altars from, from under the groves. So now, where is your God? Where is your God? You, you've dispersed with your God. He's gone. Mm -hmm. See, he did not realize their God was the God of heaven and earth. Come on. He was the God who delivered them from Egypt. Even Rab Shaka even said, don't depend on Egypt. Mm. Because they're nothing but a broken reed. Mm -mm. If you mm -mm. hand, he was trying to use his verbal skills Come on. to deflate them and to make them mm -hmm. disturbed. Come on. But now. remember, Hezekiah sent for Isaiah, told Isaiah, laid, laid the letter out to Isaiah, said, Look here, Come this on. is what this man is saying about God. Come on. What am I supposed to do? Isaiah just told him, using my word, you better pray. Come on. You better Come pray on. and be good because God is going to defeat him. God is going to stand by his word. We just have to believe God's word because Come God on. cannot fail. Amen. 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 Now, Elder Holmes. Uh, go ahead, sister. Go ahead. Hello. Uh, verse 12, 21. 
But they held their peace and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was saying, answer him not. And that's and I like that because sometimes when people are coming up against the people of God uh -huh. and we want to uh, speak up so well for ourselves and prove that uh, this is truth and this is what the you word of God me. says, you don't have to answer to mm -hmm. someone that is being outright disrespectful and foolish. Okay. okay. You don't have to answer. God is God and his enemies are always scattered. That same thing holds for us. We don't, I don't need to stand on a soapbox and declare anything that's in thus said the Lord's word. I don't have to do it. I won't do it. Amen. Anyone else? I see someone else was speaking. Go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, Go ahead. I'm thinking, I'm thinking like David. When David heard uh, Goliath defying the God of Israel, that's how I would have been feeling at that time had I been in, you know, uh, a, a, a Judean. But uh, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, you're not going to say this about my God. We trust him. We have, uh, you know, seen his hand before. And for this, you're making me angry. And just, just with, with my faith and what I know about the Lord as one of the Judeans, I would have been a little bit like... Furious, just like David was when he heard Goliath. So you, you, you've been strong. Okay, all right. Now let me ask a question. Let me ask a question. Was yes. go can I, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to ask a question. Was the Rapshaka? Was he lying? Was he telling a lie? No, he was not telling a lie. He was telling the truth. And all as the far people, as he knew, knowing that he was. Uh, not that he was telling the truth. He had defeated all of his people that he had went up before. On, and that's why Isaiah was telling the people, don't believe a word that he said. And as we today are standing here and look around us and we look up and we see that the, that the gambling casinos are now open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. But you hear that we're not supposed to go to church and we're not supposed to be up in the sanctuary. But all the clubs are opening and all the restaurants are opening. And we are sitting here shaking, saying, what should I do? Should I go into the sanctuary and pray? Or should I stay away? Because he said, well, who is he? God says, I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of sound mind. Mm -hmm. Prove me now, and I will pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. And we're all sounding good, quoting our scripture, but are we demonstrating our faith? That's what we are about this evening, to come together in a faithful unit and know that fear, F-E-A-R, is false mm -hmm. evidence appearing real, but God says, I have you covered. So be ye not afraid. Amen. I love what you said. He was telling the truth. Yes. The, the, the rapture. As far as he knew. Yes, yes. Right. yes. Right. Mm -hmm. In that way, he reminds me of Satan. Because sometimes Satan comes to us mm -hmm. and tells us the truth. Sometimes Satan, he will come and remind you, you are a sinner. You are. And that is the truth. But yet we have to rely on the word of God, what God says about us. And at this time, they needed to rely on the word of God. But let's see how they responded. Our time is getting away from us. Uh, oh, before you go, you know what? Go he, ahead, he also, put, he also put a little lie in there. Because yeah, he said true. that the Lord sent him, just like yeah. when the devil... Uh, Satan saw Eve in the garden. He told her part truth and part lie. And he was really trying to scare him into surrendering. Amen. 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 I like that. It, it was a little lie slipped in there. That's true. That's, 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 that's so true. But let's look at their let's look at their response. Let's go to let's go to um, Isaiah thirty six. Let's go to Isaiah thirty six. Isaiah. Now watch this, y'all. Because remember, we've laid the foundation for faith and courage and, and, and strength. Um, um, Hezekiah told them to be strong. Let's go to Isaiah 36, verse 21. 
But the people who sat on the wall were silent. They didn't answer the Assyrian because King Hezekiah told them not to. That's true. But then Elakim, Shabna, and Joah tore their ropes in grief and went and told Hezekiah what the Assyrians had said. Chapter 31. And when Hezekiah heard the report, he tore his robe, put on sackcloth, and went to the temple to pray. He sent El Elohim, the one in charge of the palace, seven, the royal secretary, all wearing sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet and told him to pray. What was their response? Somebody else, come on. What was their response? On everybody. Whose response are we talking about? Are we talking okay, about um, verse Hezekiah. four? Yeah, Hezekiah and the people of God. Okay, that uh, verses three and and uh, four. Yes, ma'am. It may it may be the Lord thy God will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words of the Lord your God, mm -hmm. which the Lord your God has heard. Wherefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Is, is that what you're talking about? You, you know, at first, I, I didn't like the sackcloth. I didn't like the sackcloth. Okay. 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 I just thought, I thought after, after the last chapter, when he told them to be strong, um, okay, the rap shaka, I think I'm saying it right. He came and he, he, he said all that stuff. I would have loved for them to just walk out and be like, you know, we, God got this. God got this. And it, that reminds me, when in our trials, in our situations, if they don't, if they don't end right away, sometimes we lose hope and we lose strength. But Hezekiah recovered himself quickly because they found Isaiah and they said, let's pray. And my family, when you are in a situation and you ain't got nothing, it's time to pray. All right. And, and here is one of the most strongest prayers in the Bible. It's one of the most beautiful prayers in the Bible. Um, first of all, I love the prayer of Isaiah. He said, Isaiah, um, ah, when Isaiah heard, I'm at verse five. When Isaiah heard this, he sent his message back to Isaiah. He said, he said, tell the king, this is what the Lord, the God of Jacob says, do not be afraid of Assyria or be troubled at the words of the commander. Don't listen to his threats and believe that the Lord cannot save you. The king of Syria has publicly challenged me and I will respond. God is about to show up. God is about to show up. Now watch this. Our time is running away and I don't want it to run away before we get to this prayer. This is a good prayer. Um, You're fine, Elmer. Am I all right? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Where am I at? Where am I at? Wait a minute. Isaiah 37, 5 to 7. Isaiah, we just read that. Um, let's do verse 7. I will cause him to hear of a plot back home to take his throne. He will return to his own land, and there he will die by the sword. So God let him know, I got this. I got this. I got this. But now watch this. Watch this. Let's go to Isaiah 37, 15. 37, 15. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bear with me. So Isaiah prays. The scene changes. This is a dramatic scene, everyone. So then um, go to verse 10. To King Hezekiah from the king of Assyria. Now watch this. This man is, is amazing. He says, don't let your God, whom you depend on, fool you into believing that he will deliver Jerusalem and not let it fall into my hands. What a, the rabshaka was serious. Yeah. And the devil will come at you like him and make you doubt things and make you doubt what the word of God says. But now watch this. Hezekiah is the man in this scene. He is the man in this scene. Go to verse 14. I love this verse. 14. I'm, I want to read it from the New King James Version. I'm going to change Bibles here. And, and, and listen, this is a message to us right here. Verse 37, verse 15. 
And it says, then, let's go to verse 14. And Hezekiah received the letter from the hands of the messenger, and he read it. And Hezekiah, what was the first thing he did? Went he went up to the house of the Lord. Listen, folks, this is instruction to us today. Somebody is going through. The first thing you need to do is you need to get into the presence of God. Amen? Amen. And yeah. what does it say after that? He says he took, he spread it out before the Lord. I love that text. Hezekiah took his problem and he spread it out before the Lord. I, this is one of the most beautiful prayers in the Bible. He got all this stuff coming against him. He takes, he, he takes himself, as my sister said earlier, he got himself together. He got himself in the presence of the Lord and he just spread it out before the Lord. Sometimes you have to spread that thing out before the Lord, folks. Amen. You have to put that thing out before the Lord and leave it there. And that's what Hezekiah did. And then he says, the lesson brings out that he prayed and his perspective changed. This is the memory text. Watch this. He said, then Hezekiah prayed to the Lord saying, oh, Lord of hosts. Now, I want y'all to help me with this. I want y'all to tell me what you see in this prayer. We're going to dissect this prayer. I need your comments. He says, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God. You alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Stop right there. What is Isaiah doing right there? What is he doing? Lifting him up. Come on. Come on. Praising the Lord. That's right. Giving him praise. Giving him praise. <laughs> Giving them praise, lifting them up. Come on, what else? Giving them praise. Uh -huh. Acknowledging, acknowledging him as creator. Acknowledging him as creator. Somebody else. Sort of like the Lord's Prayer. Okay, the Lord's Prayer, I like that. Acknowledging that he's sovereign. He's oh, sovereign, God. yes. Mm. He's testifying the truth of God. That Come on. he is the maker of heaven and earth and all things. Come on, come on, somebody else. He's reaffirming his belief that God is who he says he is. I like that. Somebody and else. Re and he's reaching the Lord where he's at, be sitting on the throne between the cher cherubims. Sister Audrey, you just nailed it. You took my comment. He <laughs> is, he is, he is seeing God as he is enthroned above the cherubims as the one and only. When you got a situation going on in your life, I want to encourage you to, you got to stop and see God as who he is. The lesson brings out, he was changing his perspective. He was reminding him, all of your answers are correct. He was reminding himself of who God is. Somebody else, anybody else? I just want to say that it seemed like he, in the midst of his distress, so to speak, mm -hmm. went directly, you know, in the face of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like mm -hmm. this, when everything breaks loose in my world, uh -huh. I'm going right to the face of God. Mm -hmm. God cover me. God help me. Mm -hmm. You are... Mm -hmm. Just like he, you are up sitting high, but looking low, as we like to say. But God, cover me, help yeah. me to understand, Lord. And I, and one other thing I like to do, position. Yeah. Position meant everything to him, yeah. not just posture, the position yeah. in which he acknowledged God. Yeah. During the in the in the time of distress, he said, "Lord, help me to position myself yeah. in the right place." at the right time when everything seemed to be coming loose. I imagine him looking up. I mean, he's in the temple, and, 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 and as he's saying this, I, I believe he's looking up to see, see, to, to see God where he is. Anyone else? Um, Hebrews 4.16. Hebrews 4.16 says, let us therefore come boldly come to the throne of grace. Come on. 
Yep. And also, we, we don't have to walk in there slow and scared. Uh -huh. It's just walk boldly before the Lord. Yes. yes my sister. Yes. And then when you talk about the Lord of hosts, you can see the army of angels around him. He's the Lord of hosts, and that's his military stand. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Brother Book, you, you were saying something, Brother Burks. Go ahead. Hey, you know, also, have any of us seen physically what he's talking about? <clears throat> no, we haven't. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what that tells me is that his he's letting God know, not only haven't I seen these things, but I have faith to know that they are there. Come on. I have faith to know because of what you've done in my life already that yeah. I know that you, all these things that I am saying about you <clears throat> is true. There's mm -hmm. no other God. There's no other... No one, whatever uh, homeboy said, it was like, no, I know you are the only God mm -hmm. and you are the only one. You are sovereign and you are the only one that I believe and pray to. I love it. I love it. You know, and I believe that got him, that got him uh, favor because it's impossible to please God without faith. Exactly. I love it. I love it. My brother said it earlier. He said, um, Hezekiah came to God believing that he is. And that's the first thing he did. He came, he said, I, I believe you, this is who you are, okay? And I want us to encourage ourselves that when we have to come into the presence of the Lord, like Sister Mill said, we need to get on in there. And like little Sister Reed said, we need to come boldly before the Lord. Come boldly, don't be scared. Come on in here and get, and get before God. But now look at the next sentence. Look at the next sentence. Um, I'm at verse um, 17. Mm -hmm. He says, incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. He says, open your eyes, O Lord, and see. I love that because we don't serve a God who is not interested and able to, to, to respond. God hears. God sees. And Hezekiah is saying, listen, I want you to incline. When you incline, what do you do? You got to lean forward. Yeah. And, so, cool. and so Hezekiah is saying, come on, lean forward, God. Come on, lean. I, I want you to hear what I have to say. And when, and when we are going through, we need to say, God, come on, incline your, 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 your ear and open up your eyes. Any comment? What do you feel about that? Any comments about I'm, that? I'm over here tickled because I'm literally thinking in dramatic sense too. Mm -hmm. I'm really imagining him walking in God's temple, putting this letter on the altar saying, God, look at this mess. Come on. Come <laughs> He's on. There telling him, look, th these people are, 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 look at what they're saying, God. Yes. Look at what they're saying about you. Yes. So yes. he says, bend your ear towards mm -hmm. me. Hear me. Open your eyes. Look at this. Yes. And hear these words and see how these people are reproaching the living God. Yes. So I'm over here cracking up because I'm just, I'm getting that visual right now. I love it, sister, because I see it spread out also. He done, he, he, done, he done took it all and put it right there before the Lord. And, and listen, we didn't take our bills and just put them on there like, here, here, here. Mm -hmm. it, there it is. Okay, mm -hmm. take, take that lawsuit or whatever it is and just spread it out before the Lord. And, and say, here it is. Amen. Here it is, God. And that's what he did. That's what he did. Anybody else? And then he moves on to yeah. um, review what Rab Shaka has said. Come on. Come and, on. and show how uh, Rab Shaka didn't know. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ber uh, truly, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their land. So now he's saying, yeah, yeah. Now he, he done he done beat up everybody else. Okay. And have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods. But the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord God, save us from his hand, that the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord. You alone. Mm -hmm. I love that prayer. Yes. And I want us to, to know uh, to, to, to come before God with that boldness and trust in him. Ellen, um, um, Ellen White says, and I, I meant to get the quote, I'm going to try to quote it, that prayer is the talking to a friend. You, come on, y'all know step, that steps to Christ. Yeah. Uh, we got to be able to get into his presence 
and realize that he is for us and you can just talk to him. And, and when he inclines his ear, he will hear you. And when, and when he, he will see you, he will not ignore you. He will hear and deliver you in prayer. Amen. Amen. So it is nine eleven, brother. How much are we good? At what we got? Should we keep going? Okay, we're good. Okay, all right, all right. So now let's move forward. Now, that was the portion of of who? Why should we trust God? And I believe Hezekiah laid it out for us because of who He is. Our percent. He is God. Okay. Now watch this. Basically, I'm on Wednesday's lesson, okay? Now, what I love about it is that God shows up and shows out. And we're not going to read all of it. I wish we had the time to read it all. And if you have not read these, these chapters, Isaiah is, is, is hot this week, okay? Um, Isaiah 37, 21 to 38. I'm going to read a little bit of it, okay? Isaiah 37, 21 and 38, because really... The Lord responds. Now, he has heard everything the Rab Shaka said. But the Lord responds, and he, the Lord sets it off in this chapter. Um, 37, 21. Mm -hmm. Then Isaiah, I'm at 21. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, says, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, okay, God of Israel. Because, watch this, y'all, because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, this is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. Before we go forward, I love that right there. He says, because you have prayed to me. That's a message to us tonight. Yeah. God is not going to move in some situations until you pray. And then God is going to be able to say, listen, listen, Sister Audrey, listen, Sister Regina, listen, Sister, um, Sister Strickland, uh, um, listen, listen, Art and Lisa, Elder Lisa Hood, um, 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 because you prayed to me, I'm going to move in this situation, okay? And so now, I, we, I can't read it all, but listen to some of the stuff he says. Um, look at verse 23. This is God speaking now. He says, whom have you reproached and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice? I love that. This is God speaking. And lifted up your eyes on high against the Holy One of Israel. By your servants you have reproached the Lord and said by the multitude of my chariots, I have come up to the height of the mountains, to the limits of Lebanon. I will cut down his tall cedars and his choice cypress trees. I will enter into its furthest height to its, um, to its uh, fruitful forest. I have dug and drunk water. And with the soles of my feet, I have dried up all the brooks. This is God in, in verse 26. Did you not hear long ago how I made it? Come on. This man. is God speaking. And God saying, yeah. listen, mm -hmm. I am the one. God shows up now and watch this. 180, before the end of this is over, this at this chapter. 185,000 Assyrians are dead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the enemy of God's people, that's us, they're dead. And that tells me that when folks come up against us, when issues and situations, listen, God is going to show up and show out. Amen. And you can trust in that. You can trust in it. Any comments on this chapter? This is a powerful chapter and yes, very uplift, up, uplifting. Thank you very much, Brother Hall. Amen. Amen. It, it, it's, it's a powerful chapter because it, it, it shows the power of faith, the power of trust, and the power of prayer. And I don't want us to miss that because we have situations coming up against us. When we go to him and when our peace is disturbed, he will incline his ear, he will open up his eyes, he will see us, and he will show up and deliver. And this chapter, he shows up and delivers. He will God will show up and show out. Now, watch this. Watch this. Pay attention. Pay attention. 
Um, so our last section, our first two sections dealt with how God deals with the nation, the God's people, all of us. The last section deals with how God deals with us individually, okay? Our last section, I think this is, this is a beautiful section, um, um, Isaiah chapter 38. Go there with me tonight. Uh, because God is not only interested in us as a group. He, he loves us as a group. But I want to encourage us that he loves us individually. And he will come alongside of us individually. In Isaiah 38, the Bible says, in those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his, I, watch this now. Because Hezekiah, the, the, in, in the last chapter, he walks to the temple and he spreads it out before the Lord. But I like this one also. After Isaiah tells him to set his house in order, for you should die and not live, the Bible says, then he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. And he wept bitterly. And the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, go and tell Hezekiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. God is interested in us individually. And I want to, in our closing, I just want to encourage us. Stay in the presence of the Lord. If you have to spread out your case before the Lord, or if you have to turn to the wall, get in, know that God will hear your prayer. He will answer your call. He will see your plight, and he will do something about it. And, and I was going to go more into um, prayer, but I think we've covered it. I think you all gave me great feedback tonight, and I think we've, we've covered it, that, 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 that he is listening and he is ready to hear, and he is ready to deliver. And so um, I, I, I believe we're gonna, we're gonna stop there. But just I just wanna encourage you in 2021, there's so much coming in against us, but do not be afraid. Do not be terrified. Don't, don't put any sackcloth on. Don't, don't listen to rap shaka. God is gonna see us through. Just get into his presence, turn your face to the wall, pray for that child, pray for that situation, pray for that job, pray for that marriage, pray for that healing. God is going to see you through. Southeast, I have enjoyed you all tonight. And, and do you all have any comments before we close out tonight? I know we're mute, muted. Raise your hand if you have to. Yeah. Raise your hand if you, if you have something. Okay, hold on, Donna. All right, Donna. You got her? Okay. Yeah. You got her? Okay. Donna, can't, she's still muted. Did you do it at the same time I did? I did it. Yeah, I just I did, did, did it. Okay. So um, I just wanted to say that throughout this whole study of this quarter, there has been a lot that has been right on time pertaining to what we are going through now as a people, both individually and corporately. And, and it's just been like a, a, total, a totally uh, awesome experience. And God is moving. And regardless as to what we're going through, all we have to remember is that God is in control. Amen. We need to abide in him so he can abide in us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Reed. Anyone else? Right. Amen. Amen. All right. Listen, I have enjoyed you all. I have enjoyed you all. I want to thank you all for having me tonight. Um, soon and very soon, I hope to be able to come over to Southeast and 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 just worship with you face to face, and just be blessed on tonight, and know that God loves you, and and so do I. I'll turn it back over to brother, brother Elder Brooks. Hey, thank you so much. We had a wonderful time. Um,
everything is uh, uh, just so exciting to hear you teach us. And even though the devil tried to try some things, tried his little tricks, <laughs> it didn't work. We still went on with what we were doing. And God is good. God has blessed us. So we thank you. Thank you, uh, sir, for coming out, taking time out of your schedule to teach us uh, on this lesson. And we look forward to having you again. So don't don't worry, uh, Elder Hall. We, we're going to have you again right. in the next quarter or so. And we'll okay. be, you know, have you back and and to do uh, to teach us uh, another uh, chapter of, of God's word. I'm pretty sure everyone enjoyed themselves and we just, uh, we're gonna turn it over uh, real quick to uh, Brother Donald King. We want you, Donald King, we want you to uh, uh, do that poem again. Um, Sister Jan, you want to uh, unmute him real quick for me? Yeah, I'm uh, looking for him. Is he on a, a telephone tonight? No, no, no. He's on. He's 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 right on camera. Okay, give me just a second. Oh, there he is. Okay. All, All right. right, I've unmuted you, Mr. King. So now you have to unmute yourself. There, there you, go. you go. We're good. Okay. Yes, go ahead. We can hear you. The road we travel. We have come a long, long way, but we still have a long way to go. For those who don't know how far we have come up. Brother King, you are muted again. Brother King, you're muted again. Uh, try to unmute real quick. There you go. Oh, you're muted again, sir. Okay. Um, Hold on. Try it again, Mr. King. Okay. Let's start over again, sir. Uh, okay. Yeah, yes. you're fine. We got you. It did it again, Jan. Yeah, it's something on his end. I don't know if it's, there's a button. Be is it, make sure you're not pressing the space bar or anything. Okay, Brother King, can you hear me? You, you hear Jan? She said, check on uh, you. Let, let me try it again. So Barry, don't push anything at the same time. I'm gonna unmute you one more time and you're unmuted, but now you have to click the button that says unmute. Okay, there you go. Oh. It keeps going. All right, and then let me just unmute all and let's just see what happens. Okay. All right. Try it again, Mr. King. The road we traveled. We have come a long, long way, but we still have a long way to go. For those who don't know how far we have come, I'll be glad to let you know. Our ancestors survived the lash and the field and every law made to keep them down. Their road to emancipation was long and hard, but they were freedom bound. Our task is to learn and profit from the tears that were shed yesterday. When the historians look on. Okay, we lost him again, Jan. Yeah, well, I didn't, nobody's muted, so it has to be on his end. I'm not sure. Brother King, I'm sorry, but you're muted again. I don't know if someone's, there's something going on there on your side. Um, try to unmute on your side, uh, Brother King. She's not doing this successfully. There I am right now. Ah, oh, there you are. I hear you. There you go. Okay. All right, let's try it one more time, sir. <laughs> the road we travel. We have come a long, long way, but we still have a long way to go. For those who don't know how far we have come, I'll be glad to let you know. Our ancestors survived the lash and the field and every law made to keep them down. 
Their road to emancipation was long and hard, but they were freedom bound. Our task is to learn and profit from the tears that were shed yesterday. When historians look on our legacy, what will our history say? That we overcame every barrier? That we challenged the steepest hill? That when told we couldn't reach the top, we said, oh, yes, we will. <laughs> we have come a long, long way. But this one thing I do know, we cannot rest on our laurels, no, because we still have a long way to go. Thank you. Amen. All right, amen. <clears throat> well, we got it, we, we got it done. And <laughs> uh, Elder, I mean, uh, Brother Donald, we, we thank you for it. Um, and we appreciate, um, you know, you participating. And that's for to help us with our Black History Month. And we've, you've done a wonderful job. So we appreciate all you've done. Um, okay, just a couple of more things. Next week, uh, we have Elder, we have an Elder, Elder Eichner, Joe Eichner. He will be here with us next week. He is from the Linwood Boulevard SDA Temple in Kansas City, Missouri. So we're, we're reaching folks all over. We're in local, like Elder Elder Hall, and then now we're in, next week. We'll be in Kansas. We'll be in Kansas, uh, Kansas City next week. So we look forward to having him. He's a Glenville uh, son, son of Glenville, and I remember this young man when he was a kid, and he was he was he was preaching when he was like ten years old, wasn't he, Dwayne? <laughs> About ten somewhere. Yeah. So uh, I mean, yeah, he. Amen. Yeah, he was, he's an awesome uh, man of God. So glad to have him next week. So we look forward to seeing you. Also, keep checking your email. We send some things out to you in email as reminders. And um, just wanted to remind you again in March, as we celebrate Women's History Month, uh, the first week will be Twyla Bell uh, from the West Side Church. And at the end, um, at the last part of the month, uh, the, I believe it's the 28th, we will have uh, Elder uh, Lisa, ha uh, Lisa Hood doing our uh, end of month. Why? Because the Hoods uh, will be celebrating their first year with us, even through, through this pandemic, and they have done nothing but hit the ground running. And right. we are so glad to have them with us and leading out uh, our flock here at Southeast. So we look forward to uh, March for History Month. Women's History Month. All right, and then last but not least, I was wondering, did anyone, if you if you hit me by email, if you had five people who came on, I, let me know if you had five, you have to have five. If no one did it tonight, you bring it next week. Five, five visitors for next week. And we will have a nice gift for you. And uh, we look forward to uh, uh, seeing you next week. Also, don't forget, um, sister, two, two other announcements. Uh, sister Audrey, I'm gonna let you do yours real quick. I'm, uh, you know, unmute yourself. And Sister Veronica, before you start, Audrey, Veronica, are you still with us? Okay, Audrey, go ahead. Last day event, the uh, Bible study. We're studying the sanctified life, and we'll be meeting tomorrow, uh, Sabbath afternoon at 2 p.m. All is welcome. And the information of Zoom is on the website, uh, se, the number seven, day, D-A-Y dot org. And also um, read Daniel chapter nine and chapter 10. And we welcome you to come. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, we look forward to, that's tomorrow. Uh, afternoon at 2 p.m. So we look forward to seeing you. Uh, also, what Sister Veronica was going to tell you is that we are starting a prayer circle, a prayer uh, prayer uh, vigil or every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. I think they're starting next week. I'm, uh, I was hoping that she would stay on and kind of give, uh, give the details, but if it's not next week, it'll be the 1st of March. 
So we'll let you we'll let uh, you know. I promise you. Reps, it, it will be starting this week. Uh, be, okay. I believe it's gonna be uh, seven fifteen. No, I'm sorry. Seven o'clock to seven forty-five. It'll be six forty-five to seven, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right. right. Before, well, we'll, right before prayer meeting. And right. Then that'll be right yes. in prayer meeting. Yes. All right, we will we will put it on the website so you will everyone will know. Thank you, Elder Carter. Appreciate that. And uh, so, if you uh, we want you to all come out and let's pray so we can uh, come together and 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 uh, pray as in um, for uh, what's going on our pandemic here. And uh, so we want to be able to do be able to to boldly walk through the to the throne as we had said earlier. Uh, for our lesson. Um, last but not least, we, I'm asking Elder Carter if he could uh, do our closing prayer. Please check tomorrow uh, before before we go. We will have Pastor. He's teaching. To, I mean, he's uh, he's going to continue his series tomorrow at noon. Uh, you can you can catch him on uh, the website as well as Ruku and other areas. Uh, to for uh, his program tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, I know he had some things to do. He wouldn't be able to come on tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at prayer meeting uh, next week, as well as looking forward to seeing us uh, next Friday night. Because if you miss if you miss Sabbath school, you missed a lot. So at the, with it, with that being said, Elder Carter, can you give us closing prayer prayer, please? You with me, Elder Carter? Okay. All right. Well, I I will give closing prayer. Man, you know what, Sister Donna, Sister Donna Reed, what about you? I can do it, but I like. To, how about giving us our closing prayer? All right. Well, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. Bow your heads, Eternal Father in heaven. We give you all honor, glory, and praise, Lord. First of all, we humble ourselves here before you, thanking you and acknowledging you as creator, thanking you for another Sabbath day, Lord, and another chance for us to come together, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, to learn of the deeper things of you and to turn away from the worldly things. Lord, we thank you for the blessing that you have bestowed upon us this evening in the form of um, through Elder uh, Hall coming to us, Lord, and we ask that you would continue to lead and guide him as you would have him lead and guide others. Lord, we ask forgiveness for our sins. We repent of them, Lord. We ask that you would come into our hearts and change our image to your, change our character to your image, that we would be fit for the robe of righteousness, Lord. Bless every family that is represented here this evening, Lord, bless and keep us and find us fit for your soon coming kingdom. In the holy, righteous, and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. 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 All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everyone. Happy Sabbath and uh, have a great Valentine's Day. And uh, we hope that, and thank you, Elder Hall, again, for coming. And we thank you also, Brother King your participation as well and we will see you next friday at 8 p.m if you missed sabbath school you missed a lot come on back we're going to have a great time we'll see you pastor eichner is going to be here next week and he's just one of the sons of glenville and i know you'll have a great time with him uh it's good to Everybody see you. my friend kay gillen i see you i see you out there and uh oh indra it's good to see you as well. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Cecily, we see you too. Linda Bozeman, what's up? How you doing? And um, who else we see? Sister Mills. All right, we're going to get out of here. Good night, John, boys. Time to roll. We got to go. <laughs> good night, everyone. Happy Sabbath.